this will probably be just a part one to this particular teaching of Moses, the prophet Moses from the scriptures from the Holy Bible. He is the first one to say, it is what it is. I know that may be shocking or surprising to some, but let us, let us think about this very carefully. The saying and expression, it is what it is. Now, we can call this a black expression, a kind of a black form of consciousness that is now getting universal acceptance, like so many other things that began off, in a sense, uniquely or indigenously black. But so did the saying, it is what it is got to think about it for a moment. It is what it is. See, there's a lot of these sort of correspondences that at first, at first they may seem wild and, you know, it doesn't even seem to make sense. But Moses is the first one to say it is what it is. Or rather, he is who he is. And this is part of the mystery. This is part of the mystery of, of Jah. This is part of the mystery of, of, of Yahweh of Jehovah, quote, end quote, the mystery of God in Christ. And did say that in these last days and times, those things which were so-called mysteries would be revealed. But what we're finding is with the increase of knowledge, and as they go to and fro and information and knowledge is increased, then all these so-called mysteries are becoming revealed realities. And so Moses is the first one to articulate this, let's call it a consciousness, this particular consciousness. It is what it is, or he is what it is. But first, let's go to the board, and let's outline a couple of basic, of basic points and basic facts, all right? And let's go to the scriptures. Now, many people would say that um, the part where the Almighty, the, the, the portion of scriptures where the Almighty basically says to Moses, he reveals his identity. Remember what Moses says. Moses says, Moses says, um, okay, the God of the Hebrews, you're the God of the Hebrews. But if I go back to my people, because, you know, Moses knew niggas. He knew black folks, in other words, basically. This is being real, speaking live and direct. And, and I say the God of the Hebrews. They're going to ask me, what is your name? You see, the name is so very important. They're going to ask me, but what is your name? I can't just say, okay, I've spoken to the God of the, of, of the Hebrews, and the God of the Hebrews told me this and so forth and so on. Perhaps he had other so-called false prophets going forward saying, remember, there was an Egypt, you see. And the uniqueness about what the Almighty said to uh, Moshe or Musa by saying, he is, or rather, I am, Asher, or Ehya, Ehya, or Aya, Aya, Asher, Aya, or Ehya, Shera, Ehya, Ehya, Asher, Ehya. You see the portion in, in Exodus, and this is the next book that we're about to go into in our Torah portion. I think we have one more Sabbath, and there's some more teaching concerning this particular sabbatical portion, brothers and sisters. So, y'all willing, we will have opportunity to um, get to it. What we want to do, just pull this up right here, pull up another file over here on the computer that we want to use for a reference. So, if Moses were to say anything else, the people would not have have gotten, the people would not have received. Because remember, at that portion, in that point in time, it's something like how we're at right now in, in, in history and in humanity, the experience of humanity, where the people have experienced so much um, bad, ugly, folly, a little bit of good, but mostly they've experienced um, the falls. Or, 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 or the falseness. They're looking for the realness. So when Moses came to the people, he didn't say, well, eh, yeah, I should, eh, yeah, or, quote, I am that I am. Otherwise, he would have been making himself, in that sense, quote, and quote, a God. He didn't say that. Now, see, a lot of folks, Gentiles, and our people who have been Gentilified, you know, they've been Gentilified, you know, with the Western, for example, King James Version of the Bible is a good place to start out. It's a good 
it's a good study matrix and template, but you have to go a little bit deeper, go into the Hebrew, go into the so-called Texas Receptus, get into the Koina, the Greek, and then also at the higher level, get into the Gutas and the Amharic, but start out with the basic King James, and we use the Schofield Study Bible as, an, as a reference because it has some excellent and accurate biblical references that are non-denominational, but more or less explaining the word based on the word. So here in Exodus, so we're going to call this lecture right here that Moses, right, Moses first said, right, Moses first said, it is what it is. Now, this it, some people in the West will take some offense to, to it. It, it, it. He is a he. He is not an it. But when we get into the Shemitic languages, the languages of the Bible, of the scriptures, what we'll find is that, although that is partially true from a Gentile Western misconception, there is he, it, and she, it. In other words, the word, the pronoun for, for he and the pronoun for a male person, place, or thing, a noun, is the very same pronoun. So we can say it is, but what kind of it? That's more or less the question. What kind of it? Is it a male it? Is it a female it? Right? So we go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus, Exodus 3 and 14. That number right there is magic, too. That number is magic there, too, right, or mystical or um, metaphysical, if you please. So we go right here to uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, and it says, And God, capital G, lowercase O-D, said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am hath sent me to you. Now, this is the revelation concerning the revelation of the name, they say, of the name Yahweh or Jehovah. Now, there's a very interesting um, Hebraic and, and biblical etymology that needs to be understood. We're going to try to address that in the next part or on coming forward in, in other portions of it. And the reasons why we don't want to go right into it, because only those who have a familiarity with the Hebrew or with the Shemitic will probably get it quicker than my brothers and sisters who are still growing in basic stages and basic degrees. So we're going to try to deal with more or less the kindergarten, that kindergarten level of it, so ones will learn their ABCs, and then we'll deal with some of the higher levels, get to the elementary school level, deal with the high school level, and more of the university, the collegiate school. As His Majesty Kadamawi Haile Selassie has taught us, there are three levels of education. There is general education, there is uh, special education, and there is higher education. What we're addressing right here is basic education or general. This is some general thing. So Moses, first of all, he is the first one who said this very popular refrain, it is what it is. You see, and this is what proves to the people that he truly had spoken and communicated with the God of the Hebrews, the Hebrews. He truly communicated with the true God. Because, see, at that time in Egypt, there was a lot of false gods. For example, ones would say, um, you know, the God would say, I am this, I am that, I got the Shazam power, I'm, I'm, I'm over the mountain, not the lake, I'm over the valley, not the stream, those kind of, you know, those kind of more idols you know, or demigods. But the true God, you understand, the true God, the true Hashem, the true Ha Elohim, Baruchu, said to Moses, I am that which I am. I am, it says right here, I am that I am. I am that I am. So let's let's examine this right here. I am that I am. Some would look at the Hebrew, the Asher, the Asher, here's where some make a connection with Osar, like Osiris, because of similarity of etymology, they say. They'll say, well, the Asher, because this in the Hebrew is Asher, right? And this is also known Ethiopically, so we can, we can refer 
this to some of the Ethiopic documentations as well. Very interesting. People try to say, well, Ethiopian language good is is good is, and it's not Hebrew. They lied to you. They're lying to you. The root of the Hebrew is the good is. All right. So anyway, Asher, right? Asher. I mean, you might find the Hebrew letters something like this, right? Asher, right? That's Aleph. That's a uh, Sheen. And that's a uh, 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 Resh or Rosh right there. This can also be interpreted or understood as who. You understand? I am. Now, this portion right here in the Hebrew is known as, some spell it as Ah, Yeh. Some would say Eh, Yeh. Right? We as Rastafari, the revelation of Rastafari that proves the, the, the spirit of truth. In the original and true revelation of Rastafari, when we say Ayah, we say Ayah, people say, oh, they're just speaking bad English, but we're speaking good Hebrew, you understand? Ayah, you understand? Ayah, right here. Ayah, so he says, Ehya, some say Ehya, pronounce it Ehya. See, let's look at the Hebrew quickly right here. We have the Aleph, right? We have the He, right? We have the yod, right? And we have another he. So we have an a h y h. So you go figure it out. There's an a h y h. There's no, there's no nuka nequet. There's, there's not the vowel, so forth and so on. That's in in the Masoretic um, post Ezra Reformation squared Hebrew. Squared Hebrew because the Hebrew looked more like the Ethiopic, but after the time of Ezra, he's the one that introduced the square letters because the people were used to square writing in Babylon where the people have returned from. That's just a part of the basic history. So anyway, this repeats itself over here. So Ehya, Asher, Ehya. Ehya or Ahya, Aya, Asher, Aya. I am that which I am. Now, we broke down that the true meaning of ahya comes from the root to live, or, or haya, hayawe, hayawe, and we found the root in the gutters and in the Ethiopic. So that's, a, that's another part right there. But now when Moses was told here in this revelation right here, uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse, verses 13 to 14, it says, And Moses said to God, to Elohim, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers have sent me to you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? In other words, what is the nigga's name? What is the nigga's name? What is his name? Right? They should say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And Elohim said to Moshe, I am that I am. Ehye, Asha, Ehye. Or, as we say, Aya. Aya. Right? So, the, this is the sound of it. This is the Hebrew. This is, this is a quick kind of etymology on that, but you can go, you can verify it by Strong's. You go to your strong concordance, get into the words. Now, many different ones say, well, it's not aya or ahya, it is ehya, it is this, that. So there's a whole etymological linguistic debate about it, so forth and so on. But unless they go to the Ethiopic, the root of the Afro-Shemitic languages, most of them are still just guessing. But the main idea is this, that Moses first said, it is what it is when he came to the people. Because he could not say, I am that I am. See, here's where when you understand the, the linguistics or the semantics, the semantics of it becomes very interesting. He could not go and say, I am in the first person. He had to go, like, for example, if I tell you something, I am such and such, right, and you go telling somebody else about what I just said, I am the such and such, you're not going to say, well, he said, I am such and such. You're going to say, he said, he is who he is. He said, it is what it is. So this is one of the core kind of connective links when we say that Moses first said this, and yes, he was black. And this is the proof within the inner biblical interpretation 